The end of the day is approaching. You have to use this brilliant sunlight to perform one last exercise. Don Juan marked a spot for me to stand on and told me to look at the shadows of the peaks. He said that I should watch them and cross my eyes in the same manner I ordinarily cross them when scanning the ground for a place to rest. He clarified his directions by saying that when searching for a resting place, one had to look without focusing, but in observing shadows, one had to cross the eyes and yet keep a sharp image in focus. The idea was to let one shadow be superimposed on the other by crossing the eyes. He explained that through that process, one could ascertain a certain feeling which emanated from the shadows and the rocks. My attempt to carry out the exercise was futile. I struggled until I got a headache. Don Juan was not at all concerned with my failure. He climbed to a dome-like peak and yelled from the top, telling me to look for two small white rocks. Don Juan placed each rock about a foot apart on two flat, bigger rocks. He made me stand above them, facing the south, and told me to cross my eyes and focus on the rocks and their shadows. This time, it was an altogether different affair. Almost immediately, I was capable of crossing my eyes and perceiving their individuality while they merged into one. I noticed that the act of looking without converging the images gave the single image I had formed an unbelievable depth and a sort of transparency. I stared at it, bewildered. I didn't want to blink, for fear of losing the image I was so precariously holding. Finally, my sore eyes forced me to blink, but I didn't lose the view of the detail at all. I noticed at that point, it was as if I were looking from an incredible height at a world I had never seen before. I also noticed I could scan the surroundings of the shadow without losing the focus of my visual perception. Then, for an instant, I lost the notion I was looking at a rock. I felt that I was landing in a world vast beyond anything I'd ever conceived. This extraordinary perception lasted only for a second, and then everything was turned off. I automatically looked up and saw Don Juan standing directly above the rocks, facing me. I had to confess, I was more mystified than ever about not doing. Don Juan's comments were that I should be satisfied with what I had done, because for once I had proceeded correctly, that by reducing the world I had enlarged it, and that, although I had been far from feeling the lines of the world, I had correctly used the shadows of the rocks as a door into not doing. Don Juan saying I enlarged the world by reducing it intrigued me to no end. The details of the porous rock in the small area where my eyes were focused was so vivid and so precisely defined that the top of the round peak became a vast world for me, and yet it was really just a reduced vision of the rock. 